You are very familiar with a number of common fuels which are combustible or even explosive such as gasoline, diesel fuel, kerosene, propane. Of these, gasoline is the one with which everyone has experience. This useful fuel is used in your lawnmower, chainsaw, family car, even your welder in many cases. It is also likely that you have heard or seen the results of a gasoline fire or explosion. Always remember that the small amount of gasoline which explodes each time a cylinder fires comes from a storage tank located nearby. Listed below are some safety precautions you must follow when using engine-driven equipment. Do not fill the fuel tank with the engine running, particularly when the fuel is gasoline. There is no good reason not to shut the engine off when refueling. Do not smoke when fueling or when near fuel. If you need to smoke, take a break away from the refueling area. Avoid sparks and open flame when fueling. Remember, the arc is a source of sparks. Keep it away from the fuel. Do not spill the fuel. If you do spill it, wipe it up. Don't allow puddles of fuel to develop because of a spill or leak. After wiping up the gasoline, dispose of the rag as a hazardous material while it dries and wait a minute or so until the fumes from the fuel clear. Nature has provided you with a sensitive fuel sensing device, your nose. Note, please follow your employer's guideline for disposal of waste materials. Shut off the fuel at the fuel tank or sediment bowl while moving your engine-driven welder. This reduces the potential for a fuel leak as you travel. Your welder has been designed to minimize the possibility of a fire caused by an internal fault. There is little inside which will easily burn. However, you should be sure that you follow the installation and maintenance instructions provided by the manufacturer. Be sure the wiring is fused and grounded properly. Refer to the National Electrical Code and any local requirements. There are two other sources of sparks which you should know about. Engine exhaust sparks and internal electrical sparks. If you have looked closely at an engine after dark, you have undoubtedly seen the exhaust glow and may have noticed a spark or two rising a short distance from the exhaust pipe before disappearing. Normally these sparks will not be a problem because they cool rapidly. However, under some circumstances they may pose a fire hazard. Some governmental regulations may require a spark arrestor which will trap sparks. This is a particular concern and is a requirement in dry forested areas where a fire can easily be started and locations such as in offshore oil rigs and refineries. Know where a spark arrestor is required and install it. Your arc welder and most other electrical equipment contain switches, relays, and brushes which create very small sparks when operating. There is no fire hazard associated with these sparks under normal circumstances. However, no general purpose electrical equipment, especially arc welders, should be used in any location where an explosive gas is present or can escape. Special safety precautions must be taken and a hot work permit is generally necessary when welding under such conditions due to the serious hazard. Perhaps you have noticed the warning about moving parts on your welder and thought it unnecessary because it is only common sense. We agree it's common sense, but don't skip to the next topic just yet. As a welder, you are interested in welding, but remember, you also must operate a welder which has moving parts. In a welder, there may be many moving parts, but we are concerned primarily with the cooling fans, which offer the most serious risk of injury to you, the welder. When working in and around equipment, which is a cooling fan running at high speed, it is important to be careful, especially when you're working near those parts. Equipment is enclosed to protect you from moving parts, but as you know, sometimes it is necessary to open the enclosure to operate or service the equipment. It is when you open or remove the enclosure that you expose yourself to injury from a moving part. Please follow these rules. You may prevent an accident someday. Rule number one, turn the engine or power off before working on a machine unless the work requires it to be running. Don't be lazy at the expense of safety by not shutting the welder down when you must service your equipment. In addition, it is wise to disable the machine by disconnecting the engine ignition, battery, or input power. Rule number two, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, and if you don't know, don't touch. Your welder is a reliable piece of equipment but even the best welder will require service at some point in time. 
When you believe there is a problem with your welder, have a trained repair person check it out. If you insist on doing the work yourself, get your operating manual out and check the troubleshooting section for your problem. If you don't understand the manual, then find a trained serviceman. Don't fool yourself by thinking you can tinker with the welder and somehow solve the problem. Injuries can occur when this happens. Rule number three, keep the enclosure on your welder intact, even if it means you replace a panel or guard, which you may have to remove again. Following this rule may cause you some inconvenience, but it may also prevent you or another worker from being injured. Don't be the one who removes a guard and causes another person injury. Rule number four, always use safe work habits and be especially careful when you must service a machine which is running. First, only work on a machine if you are qualified to do so. Even if you are qualified, only work on a machine which is running if that is the only way to perform the work. As a welder, you will probably not need to work on a welder with the engine running. Leave that to the repair shop. If the machine is not working properly, don't use brute force. That never solves the problem. Problems are only eliminated by adjustment and or replacement of a part. Too many times an individual will use force and slip, causing injury to himself. An example of this is an operator who tries to force the carburetor governor linkage on a gasoline engine welder. In such cases, the problem is usually at the idler or carburetor, not the governor. If brute force is used when the problem is not understood, someone may be hurt. Rule number six, read, read, read. It seems that we never have time to read the manual. Don't try to learn the hard way when someone has taken the time to write it out for you. Take the time to get the manual for your welder and read it. At the same time, read any warnings or instructions attached to the machine. This information has been provided for your benefit, but is useless unless you, the welder, read it. No matter how unnecessary the warnings or safety instructions may seem to you, for each one there is a potential for injury if ignored. We hope you have been thinking about your working habits and your welder while reviewing this section. Do you measure up? If not, then change your ways and prevent an injury. If you own or operate an engine welder, Look at the area around the cooling fan. If there are no sheet metal guards bolted in place on either side of the cooling fan and radiator shroud, contact your Lincoln Electric representative, distributor, or service shop to order the proper fan guards. Remember to write down the welder model, code number, and serial numbers so the proper parts can be specified. If other equipment you work with lacks guarding, consider obtaining guards from the manufacturer. If they are not available, make your own. Of course, the manual for your Lincoln Electric welder is available on our website at www.lincolnelectric.com upon request, should your original have disappeared.